Welcome back. You're still watching today and it's Africa Mobility and Transport Month. And one of the biggest challenges in South Africa is balancing transport and the impact on the environment. Congestion of vehicles has resulted in heavy pollution and a detrimental impact on the environment. But there could be a solution. Electrical vehicles have emerged as a game changer in the quest for green transportation. One of those taking up the space is Green Scooter. We're joined by its CEO, Fezile Lamini, to discuss the matter further. Thank you very much uh, for your time this afternoon, Faisley. And maybe let's just start with that very question about how exactly does a green scooter plan on reducing the carbon footprint in transportation, something that is heavily relied on by millions across South Africa? Uh, good afternoon and thanks for having me. Um, so what green scooter is basically doing is that our responsibility is not purely on decarbonizing uh, the environment, but it's helping companies to decarbonize their own ecosystems. So these ecosystems focus on uh, different different uh, uh, tenets of those companies. So it can be the first mile and also the last mile when it comes to mobility. That is done by introducing an electric three-wheeler. This three-wheeler can do one of two things or more. One side is moving people. The second is also moving goods. But beyond that, our company is also focused currently with a research project, which is focused on localizing manufacturing of, of, of batteries for electric mobility or for stationary usage, and also helping and working with other companies within the space in terms of um, creating sustainable strategies for them to go green. And those sustainable strategies are going to be important, Fezil. I mean, I just recently returned from the Netherlands, and if people aren't cycling uh, on traditional um, uh, um, uh, bicycles, they are using electric uh, bicycles and the like, but they're also driving electric vehicles. The nice thing about that is that there are charging stations in much of the different parts of the cities there. A sustainable solution in South Africa, though, would be a difficult one, not only because we have a lack of infrastructure, but we've also got energy issues that we grapple with as well. So what exactly would those sustainable solutions that you look to provide uh, to your clients uh, look like in this regard? Well, in terms of what they look like, it's utilizing what they have at their disposal. So what they, what they have at disposal, typically it's land and buildings. It's by introducing self-sustainable charging infrastructure that can help support not only the vehicles that they procure from us to use on site, but also those that would be used, that that would be provided by any other OEM. So further to that, we're also looking at uh, the, the wider network. So currently, we are also working with uh, Santaco Tour Tourism Desk, and with that, we're trying to introduce the, and uh, a sustainable uh, a model that. Um, will provide uh, a feeder system into the greater transport network. This greater transport network is also going to be heavily reliant on the on, on, on different uh, facets, such as locations of, 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 of taxi ranks, um, uh, where, where and how people will be mo moved and how they will be gaining access to these technologies. So with that, it's more mostly focused on sustainable uh, hardware, sustainable infrastructure, and, you know, trying to trying to also uh, beat pub beat beat the policy before it even uh, gets thoroughly implemented because we already we've already been 7 years ahead of this so what we're doing is just working with some critical partners within the passenger transport space that being the apex body of the transport uh, uh, network we're also working with the FMCG space that is for goods and further to that we're trying to introduce other technologies that would be utilized i can't really delve into mm. all of the different things that we're doing no, obviously you could not trade secrets. I absolutely understand. Uh, but maybe break down a misconception that the EV sector uh, is an expensive one to get into, or perhaps it is, uh, but the sustainability benefits that come with it um, are long-lasting and worth the associated costs. Yeah, look, um, I, 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 I do not advise anyone to just try and you know jump into the automotive space because it's, it's very expensive, especially from an R&D perspective that you're not only looking at that but you're also looking at compliance so you're trying to make sure that when you introduce a new electric vehicle that this electric vehicle does meet euro standards in terms of getting a euro type approval but further to that i mean you know we started within the three wheel space because it's really affordable you know so it's, it's an affordable space to participate in and i mean over time you know in the past seven years and ten months of our existence and obviously and beyond what we are trying to do is 
um, uh, create a vertical integration within our business. And this vertical integration is, is called value chain engineering. So with this whole value chain engineering is to try and localize as much of our components and hardware that we actually currently import. And we want to re reduce those dependencies and create our own dependencies that will also support a development of a local uh, automotive sector that will allow more participants to come into the space. Thank you very much for your time. That is the CEO uh, of um, a Green Scooter uh, joining us uh, this afternoon, uh, Fesli Thamini, uh, to speak about the EV sector, but the opportunities that it unlocks for businesses, uh, those operating in the transportation sector, but also its contribution to reducing the carbon footprint. Let's move over to this now.